Okay, it's uh, 6.31. Uh, I see five members present. Joe Method will may be joining us shortly. Uh, I want to, oh, yes, I'm sorry, yes. Joe, you're here. Um, Garfield Reed uh, may be joining us. Um, pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, uh, general law 30A section 18 and Governor Healy's March 29, 2023 revised order Extending remote participation by all members in a meeting of a public body. This meeting of the Great Barrington Affordable Housing Trust will be conducted by remote participation to the greatest extent possible. Specific information and general guidelines for remote participation by members of the public and our parties with a right and a requirement to attend this meeting can be found on the town's website at www.townofgb.org. Um, for this meeting, members of the public who wish to listen or uh, to the meeting may do so as found on the top of the agenda. Um, no in-person attendance of members of the public will be printed, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access, access the proceedings in real time via technological means. All votes are to be roll call votes. Um, we have a very large agenda tonight. It's going to be very difficult to get through uh, everything. I uh, understand that, and we'll try to do the best we can. Um, also, I apologize for sending out some of the information late. It's just I send it as soon as I get it, but um, well, there's a lot of information. The first order of business is one that we are required to do by the town. And that is annually after the July 1st, beginning of the fiscal year, we have to reorganize. That is the terms of the officers of our committee uh, need to be reelected. In our committee, we only have two, a chair and a vice chair. Um, I hope we can do this expeditiously and get this out of the way. Are there any nominations for uh, chair? This is a term to continue one year until July 1st of 2024. Um, I well, hold on. I'm continuing. Well, Fred, why do I think that we already did this though? We did this in June, yes. We did this in June. Unfortunately, I jumped the gun and it had to be done after July 1st okay. uh, when new when members were reappointed. Okay, so I I motion for uh can I just nominate you for chair? Sure. I uh, second. Okay. Um, are there any other nominations? None. Hearing none. Roll call vote. Bill Cook. Aye. Joe Method. Aye. Uh, Krisa. Aye. And Ananda. Aye. Aye. Good. Uh, nominations for vice chair. Nominate Bill Cook. I second it. Are there any other nominations? Yeah, I nominate Ananda. I'm flattered. Um, we can second it for the purpose of the discussion. Uh, yes. Would you? Would you accept? I guess is the question. I know you're very busy. I mean. Um, Would we just vote or what? Would you like to be vice chair? I'll um, second your nomination, but uh, you know. <laughs> um, I guess I would need to know, Fred. What would you need from me in that capacity? Um, it's in general, I'm more than happy to serve. I also would have been happy to vote for you, Bill. Um, I do have some limitations. I'm living with long COVID. Um. And so you've already seen, I've had to miss a couple meetings, but so I think it depends on what best serves the group. Um, the answer to the question is the duties of the vi vice chair are to serve when the chair is not available. Um, in practical terms, Bill started this and he has continued to be involved in uh, many, 
many things and uh the uh, i had when i succeeded bill and took over the chairmanship i took over uh a lot of the administrative things making sure the minutes get done um posting the agenda speaking on behalf of the committee that kind of thing so uh bill do you want to Continue or I'm happy to continue or have a vote. I <laughs> well, I, what I can say is, um, I as I said, I'd be happy to vote for you, Bill. I'm also happy to serve. It doesn't sound like it. Um, it doesn't sound like it's beyond my capacity, and I'm happy to do whatever the group prefers. I enjoy a strong working relationship with you, Bill, and I have faith that we will continue to do so. Right. In truth, it's primarily more administrative stuff than uh, anything else uh, in some ways. I'm happy to uh, mix it up. Sure. Um, I, I guess we... We've heard a statement from each candidate. We have two candidates, Bill Cook and then and Anderson Payne. Uh, I um, call for a roll call vote. Um, uh, your choice is to pick one of the two candidates. This is for vice chair. Bill Cook, who do you vote for? I'll vote for Ananda. Ananda. Joseph Method. You're muted. Uh, I'll, I'll vote for Ananda, just like, like you said, to mix it up. <clears throat> uh, Christina, Krista, whatever. I also vote for Ananda, just for a new blood, nothing against Bill. <laughs> no. Ananda! Uh, I will abstain. Okay, abstain. Um... I'll vote for Ananda. We'll make it uh, unanimous. Well, I am honored and I will work hard. Okay. Except and... for all the days that I'm sick, then I will not work hard. Sure. <laughs> um, okay. Um, we have meeting minutes uh, for the ADU pilot meeting for June 15th. I don't know if anybody's had a chance to look at those. Mm -hmm. I have. Uh, do you have any? Do you want to vote on them? Do you want to pass them over? What do you want to do? Let's vote have, on them if we can. Yeah. I have one note, and perhaps you can, so you all can advise on if anything needs to be amended to them. I'm prepared to vote on them, but um, there's a. It states that Ms. Timpain recommended that the trust not engulf, get involved with owners renting to children. My recollection is that the main point of that discussion was that we need to understand how the Miss Murphy's rule applies to ADUs and then comply accordingly. And our discussions since then have, and the documents reflect that we're waiting to hear back from town council. So I don't know, like for the record, I don't have a strong opinion about this either way. I just think we should comply with what's legally allowed. Well, let's uh, make sure that the minutes um, accurate. are accurate. I mean, I can't no, imagine. It says, it says here, question, but it's recognizing that it is possible that a property owner might want to develop an ADU to rent to their own children. Ms. Tempain acknowledged that the trust cannot tell a property owner who to rent to. She recommended the trust not get involved with the owners renting to children. Yeah, yeah. and I think the main point of the discussion we were having is actually that we... so. For uh, those who don't know, and I didn't know, Miss Murphy's rule is something that applies to rentals in the home that you also live in. And mm -hmm. it changes um, some of the rules around how the landlord can choose a tenant, including family members. So the point that I think we left with was that we need to we need to know what that rule is and we need to comply with it whichever direction it goes. Okay. I just want to make the minutes accurate. We can deal with it mechanics of the issue later. Um, can I strike that sentence in its entirety? She recommended the trust not get involved with owners renting to children and sure. recommend that um, 
Yeah, we could say we more information is needed. Um, yeah, we did we we did leave that meeting with Chris reach, reaching out to town council about the issue of Miss Murphy's rule. Yes. May I ask a question? Um, we're talking about ADU now, yeah? Yes. That's correct. ADU is separate um well dwelling next to the house. So how does that apply? That's exactly the question because it can an ADU can be a dwelling in the house. It can oh, be a separate structure completely. And under Great Barrington Town Law, it can also be a tiny house. Oh, okay. And it's all on the property. So if it in terms of children and noise, or that's what's going on? It's not it's not it's little. It's not, little. It's not even is little. It family members that we're talking about, Ms. Murphy's law. Okay. Yeah. Not is totally. it can I right now we're we're working with minutes. Exactly. So I struck the sentence that begins, she recommended uh trust not getting involved with owners renting children. Yeah. Instead, I'm proposing more information is needed on Miss Murphy's rule on renting to family members. Yes. Yeah, perfect. Mm, okay. Is that accurate enough for I the minutes? So. Yes. Great. I move we accept that amendment to the minutes. <laughs> Second that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. We're just going to vote on the revised minutes. Yep. Okay. So um, the minutes as revised will be the the motion, if you don't mind. Uh, um, so the, I make a motion to vote on this six fifteen subcommittee minutes as revised. Second. Um, and so for the record, even if you weren't present, although everyone except for me was, um, there you can vote on, or, or, and actually Christina wasn't either. Um, you can vote on the accepting the minutes uh, or you can abstain. So uh, this, is, this, this vote is on the uh, June 15th uh, subcommittee minutes as revised. Bill Cook, please. Aye. Uh, Joseph Method? Aye. Ananda Timpain? Aye. And Christina? Aye. And Fred? Yes, aye. Unanimous. Okay. Um, we have one more set of minutes here. That is the regular meeting for um, June 18th. I think that might have come out just last night or Saturday night. So you may or may not have had a chance to look at it. I don't know if you want to vote on it or not. Sure. If we can, that'd be great. Mm -hmm. Has anybody had a chance? Has everyone had a chance to take a look? Yes. Okay. Uh, are there any corrections? There's one small one on page two. It says, it refers to buyer selection and that should be applicant selection. Okay. And on page three, Fred, in a comment, summarizing a comment you made, it refers to refer to calculating 30% AMI. And I don't, I don't, I couldn't remember any part of the conversation where the 30% AMI was relevant. It's 30, so it's, it's, I was well, if that's an error, Fred. It is an error. Um, the discussion had to do with what the, rent would be for a hundred percent AMI and the discussion had to do with uh, normally 30 percent of your income is used to calculate rent yeah right it was 30 percent of 100 percent so it's 30 percent of the income as a person yeah yes yeah. not 30 percent AMI so yeah. we're going to revise that to say uh, to be clear, how how rent is calculated at thirty percent of a hundred percent of AMI or something like that. Mm -hmm. Percent of a hundred percent AMI, and the, I think that at the time it was said that there was a, a formula for such a thing, so that we didn't have to reinvent it. That we just use the standard yeah um okay this is a roll call vote uh two amendments on the um june 18th men uh 
to accept June 18th. Uh, Bill Cook, please. Aye. Joseph Method. Aye. Ananda. Aye. Christina. Abstain. Abstain. Okay. Yeah, I don't know what it is about. I didn't read it. It doesn't matter. Well, it does matter. I, I'm sorry you didn't read it. But I can't vote on something that I have no idea what it's about. Yeah, it's just the recording of the minutes from a meeting. Oh, it's you... just the minutes. Okay. And you weren't at. Yeah, I wasn't at. Uh, unfortunately, that was a well. And anyway, I vote um, yes, a I. So uh, moving on, like I say, we have a large agenda. So thank you for that. Um, uh, in terms of the chairman's chair's report of activities, uh, a number of us attended the open house at the Grove Street House that Habitat held. They are uh, actively now marketing for their lottery. The house will be sold for $250,000 to a successful lottery uh, person. They told us that they had at the time over 80 uh, inquiries and uh, uh, people who were qualified for the lottery. They also told us that there were a tremendous number of people who were interested in the North Plain Road Housatonic uh, development that Habitat is, is, is also um, working on. So that, that is coming up um, very, sh very shortly. I wish we had more houses um, the uh, Heather Bello, Bello wrote an article, I believe it was also in the Edge and in, in, in the newsletter. Um, so that's that's help that's happening. The North Plain Road, um, the engineers dragging his feet. I had a meeting with Chris Rembold and Habitat on Monday. Uh, the discussion was all frustrating and how we can do anything. We are considering replace. Uh, I shouldn't. We're considering action against the engineer to make sure um, for those who don't know what the issue is, the final bid documents to build the infrastructure, the road, sewer, other utilities uh, were supposed to be completed several months ago. They haven't been completed. There's a whole other checklist. The engineer is supposed to have finished them. Uh, after they're finished, the the documents will go out to bid, to a public bid, and will be awarded to a contractor who at this likely time late is, is late in the construction season, may not begin construction until the spring of uh, next, next spring. So um, that's where we're at on that. Um, uh, do we want to then... So the, the, uh, is there any other new business, any other, I'm sorry, any other uh, news that anyone wants to bring up or um, no. talk about? No. Um, and I see Ananda have a hand up. Uh, I had a hand up and then it somehow moved to Ananda's. <laughs> I don't know what happened. But uh, you go ahead first. I just wanted to ask a question about that lottery because... Um, when I talked to Erin and one of those women, I didn't really understand the rules that because they said if this one doesn't work, then then it goes to the next one. What does that mean? Does it mean with the bank? If the bank comes through, then or doesn't, then it goes to the other one. You know, I'm not directly involved with it, but that sounds about right. Mm -hmm. That you know they'll pick. Uh, a qualified applicant mm -hmm. who then has to, I believe, and I'm make I'm filling in the gaps here uh, based on what we know that um, the first qualified applicant is required to uh, complete a mortgage uh, on the house, and if for whatever reason that can't go through. Um, and they withdraw, then they go to the next qualified applicant. And um, or and also getting those grants maybe or whatever. But but um, you said she actually has eighty accepted applicants. 
I mean, I don't know that they're accepted. Um, they told me that they had 80 qualified applicants. Wow. Okay. Thank you. Um, but that was early, and they may have more, or or some have may may have changed their mind. Uh, so that's basically an order of magnitude that there's a tremendous amount of interest. Wow. And I was told that a number of people who came to the open house were interested in the in the North Plain Road um, house. Well, and one more question. I don't know if you were you heard me asking them that if I had gifts from other people instead of having the having paid mortgage uh, and being accepted for mortgage, she said that would make me unqualified for affordable housing. Do you think this doesn't make any sense to me? Because uh, if the gifts are only for the house, that's not my money. You know, they, uh, it doesn't seem to me uh, legal. I think you're way beyond what we are able to answer. I think it's a mortgage um, question. Okay, thanks. Um, no, it's not mortgage question. It's a, it's her uh, um, making it me either qualified for affordable housing or not. It's nothing to do with mortgage. It has that she decides that if I have the money, the gifts. Uh, that towards the mortgage that would make my mortgage really low, uh, I don't qualify anymore for as an affordable applicant. Well, Affor from what I know, um, you know, say you were buying a two family, not this house, but say you were buying a two family mm -hmm. and you wanted to count the income from the other rental unit. Mm -hmm. That comes in as regular income for the purposes of uh, mm -hmm. of, of qualifying for uh, this program. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's possible that that may be something like that, mm -hmm. that if the gifts came in as regular income, um, then they may or may not be, you know... Um, Except they are not regular income. They're only there for that reason. Not okay. I have like, again, it's kind of beyond where we I understand. really, really let's have any ability to answer. So okay, let's move on. Um, yeah. Please. Go ahead. Rose. And then the Rose. Rose. So can we move? Um, sh hopefully she'll come back, but can we move on to the um, discussion of the ADU pilot? Yes. Okay. Uh, do I have it up? Um, I would think that we kind of need Ananda to be involved yeah. in that. <laughs> well, that'd be nice, yeah. <clears throat> uh, I did have a minor correction. Mm -hmm. You want to talk about it? Um, sure. It's the AMI tenant requirement. Are you, where are you? Are you on the ADU pilot? Yes. You know, so I printed it out. It's uh, I don't know which page it is. Let's see. One, two, three, four. Uh, maybe maybe page six. AMI tenant requirement. Can you see that? No, yes. Just... Uh, I think it's page six. Uh, Ananda is not back with us. Let me just check here. Maybe on her way. Uh, no. I'm afraid Ananda crashed out, so. Um, Uh, is there anyone else that's capable of demonstrating, of, of quickly presenting this here? Uh, well, we sort of had it presented already, didn't we? Yeah, we presented it. Uh, how about recapping then? Recapping. Uh, okay. All right, so you're on so the So where do you want me to go? I, I can run this through the screen. Okay. Uh, Is there terms and definitions? 
a terms and definitions. So you have ADU, so that can be, uh, so um, that can be um, base, like basements, garages. It could also be like a cottage house or it could be a tiny house. Um, yeah, pretty wide open. And then, um, so we're covering all of those. Um, she's coming back. An area median income going to 100% AMI. Uh, and then uh, the AMI restriction is that the minute we understand it to be the minimum period of restriction is, is 10 years. That should be is uh, not in. Oh, um, uh, okay. Um, then and then and, and if you want to pick up, you can. We're just we're just kind of representing it. Oh, well, I mean. What what's the easiest way to go through? I mean, I really think that we need gonna, a, a quick I recap. Just gonna make a motion that we. Sure, that's fine. I mean, because we've already gone through it, so I was going to make a motion that we adopt the ADU pilot proposal as outlined in the Affordable Housing Trust ADU pilot proposal document, and stipulating that rental rates on all ADUs in the program comply with any and all affordable in income rent guidelines. I'll second that. The motion is adopt. Uh, adopt the ADU pilot proposal as outlined mm -hmm. in the Affordable Housing Trust ADU pilot proposal document and stipulating that rental rates on all ADUs in the program comply with any and all affordable income rental guidelines. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, a motion has been made and seconded. So, uh, I'm just catching up with my notes. I don't write that fast. Sure. Um, I still do have one minor correction, which. Well, we, there's motions on the table. Yeah, so. Well, um, do you want to make a motion now, Bill, to change it or do you? Uh, well, we we could have to once a motion's on the table, we can have discussion. So yes, well, why don't we put the page up? The AMI tenant requirements. I think it's page six. Okay. Yeah, that one. Good. We have, went by it. Next one. Back back up one. Okay. That one. Uh, AMI minimum of a hundred percent of the tenant. It should be at maximum of a hundred percent for the tenant. <laughs> Yes. Otherwise, we're going to be serving some really okay. rich people. <laughs> um, and okay. um, Fred, if it's helpful to you, I can edit this part as we go, and I'll send it to you at the end of the meeting. Yeah, that'd be fine. I just have a PDF copy. Yeah. And I, I don't have Adobe, so I'll, I could edit it, but I'd really easier for you to do it. Yeah, I'm happy to do um, that. So that's corrected to AMI maximum of 100%. Correct. Because... Um, would it make sense for Ananda to be sharing the screen? This is fine. I mean, I think for expediency, unless we think we're doing huge things. Um, well, so oh, I, I have a few comments when when it gets to that. Do we want to vote on this? Do we want to vote on this amendment? Or, 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 or just, gonna, I think just, we're going to call it a typo. Yeah. And just uh, a correct it. I okay. don't think it substantially re changes. No, it reflects the intent. And right. it reflect it's a typo, really. It's just a you know, technical correction. Yep. Um, so I wanted to um, offer an amendment, um, but I'm not sure which page it should apply to. Um, it would be to the terms of the loan. It's the loan structure and administration section, and it should be page seven and eight. Yeah. Okay, so right now it says the loan, no interest 10 year loan tied to minimum 10 year restriction to 100% AMI with compliance 50% 50 forgiven at 10 years, option to extend AMI restriction 20 years for additional 50% forgiveness. I would like to amend it to strike out uh, from with compliance to, to forgiveness and replace it with or sorry, um, amend it 
uh, to strike out after 50% and say with compliance forgiven at 10 years? So um, in the first bullet- uh, that... Wait, 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 we need a second first before. Anyone can second. I'll second for the purpose of discussion. Okay, I, I need to hear that again all the way through. So basically what you're saying, Joe, is you are you're making a proposal, a motion that we forgive the whole thing. Yeah. The whole thing at 10 years. At 10 years. And and not worry about the option to extend. So it would strike completely the repayment section. And it would strike the last sentence of the first bullet on page seven. And it would strike. Is this page seven? This one. Yeah. And on page eight, it would strike on the fourth bullet. There's a, a phrase referencing 20 years. I don't have page numbers. So is this page seven? Yeah, seven and eight. Yeah. I don't know why I don't have page numbers. It's um, an oversight on my part. I just can see the slide numbers and the PowerPoint. So. So which line were you striking on this? The outstanding issues? Um, under property sale. Okay. The but new owner may keep the lien in place and continues the program yeah, the, under the same the term. phrase or 10 years in cases in which the property owner has extended to 20 years, that would be stricken under this proposal. I would like to second your um, amendment proposal, Joe, and and participate in any discussion. All right. Uh, we need to make sure we understand what we're doing here. Uh, basically, the amendment would strike the ability to keep the lien in place and would re have forgiveness after 10 years. Is that a summary? Uh, ability to keep the lien. Um... Ability, okay. I mean, uh, it's so, a, so it's we a, would remain in place for the for the 10 years it's so just, like somebody was out of compliance let's say they rented for five years and then they stopped that you know that would mean they weren't in compliance so the lien stays it's just the whole um anything after year 10 that we've written about comes out and the idea is that if somebody complies for 10 years the entire amount is forgiven Okay. It, Do we and, understand it? The amendment. Yeah, and the the intent is the intent is just to simplify it, just to make okay. it very very simple. Uh, years. Not just simplify it. It makes people not continue it uh, if they go get all the money. You know, I completely don't agree with this this amendment. So it's not just to simplify. It makes it completely different. One of the things so. The the thing with after okay so after ten, yes. it, takes away, it takes away the incentive at ten years okay, um, but that incentive was totally voluntary because they wouldn't. Well, I guess you're right. So it was a fifty percent forgiveness, and then they would get a hundred percent if they they extend it after years, twenty years, which I am absolutely for twenty years because ten years and then being all of a sudden. Uh, thrown out of the house because they changed the rules. It's it's just not right. I I completely completely against it. Hmm. Well, I was just thinking about town meeting where Ian had asked for uh, I think it was a hundred thousand dollars in exchange for ten years for an apartment, and it didn't. Flop. He asked for two hundred, but yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, and that was just for ten years. I. Yeah. Um, Amanda, do you have a comment? Um, I would say so, Christina. To your point, um, I hear you. The more you know, if we could get people doing twenty years, that'd be great. Um, and under the proposal as it stands without these changes the second 10 years is still voluntary it's heavily incentivized but it is voluntary mm -hmm. so i just wanted to restate that mm -hmm. um and in terms of town meeting and that discussion i think 
I think it's important. Um, I also think that, you know, I also do think that context matters. Um, and I mean, we won't, we won't know what town meeting would think unless town meeting had a discussion about this, but I, some of the things I would say that I think are different is that in this program, it's, one, it's taxpayer, it's taxpayer dollars going to taxpayers to support taxpayers to stay in this, be able to continue to stay and afford here, um, and specifically taxpayers who might be struggling to do that, and to provide more housing for other Great Barrington community members. And so that's a little bit different dynamic than I think a, a developer seeking public funds um, for yeah. a shorter. So I would make that distinction. And yeah, of course it's different, but it still doesn't intend to vote. Okay, I think we're we understand it. Uh, mm -hmm. This is a vote on the amendment to. Yeah, but just, but just just to clarify, like, so let's say this that we vote this down. Can it be? Can we? Can it be offered up in a different flavor? Yes. Okay. Um. Because yeah, I mean, I I think yeah, that's fine. I would like you can to have as many amendments out. as you want, as you want, as your tolerance is for tonight. And <laughs> as long as you get a second, we can have a discussion on whatever you want to vote on. I would okay. like uh, Joseph to explain his thinking. Yes, I would too. Uh, well, I, I would like a summary of what this is as succinctly as possible. I understand it that mean that it sunsets after 10 years. Yeah, so I, I so I I kind of like forgot my one of my original thoughts, which is simply that like, yes, uh, my original thought was that ten years in some ways is a long time from now. Like in terms of like we're not sure that the people here will still be in in this in this committee will still be on this committee in ten years, <laughs> uh, and so if in ten years you have a bunch of. Uh, subsidized units that are going to sunset i would say why not let that be a problem for that committee and they can offer a new incentive and just re and just create a new incentive for whoever wants to do whoever wants to do units and that could be in the form of new units or it could be in the form of subsidizing the existing units to continue on with the affordable housing uh status so I guess, I guess that was my thought, and I, and I, I guess what I'm hearing from, uh, uh, Christia is that, um, that I guess I'm, that in some ways ten years isn't a long time because maybe someone's still living there and now they get, they're getting kicked out, um, but that was yeah that was my my thinking was was simply to, to make this as successful as possible, make it seem like it's uh something with not. A ton of strings attached to it. I think when people hear twenty years, that's kind of unfathomable for a lot of people, in terms of like making business decisions and whatever. So, and and I and and we've had people say five years, and uh, and I guess our understanding is that we can't do five years. We can only do ten years. So I'm I'm trying to make it as, as clear, uh, like basically make the carrot as clearly a carrot as possible. <laughs> okay, I'd like to wrap up the discussion. Uh, this is a vote on an amendment to the main uh, article. The uh, amendment is to basically sunset the program after 10 years. Uh, and, and is that accurate? Yeah, um, I, I did have just one other thing. I mean, we have to keep the CPA guidelines in mind, and I don't really know how they apply to this. Um, I would, in what sense, Bill? Well, is, is 10 years long enough? Yes. Oh, yes. I mean, they were willing to support the, the CPA applicant. I don't want to use his name. Uh, for the Mahewi block for 10 years. Uh, and also, as I understand it, unless we own the property. Yeah. 
in the subcommittee, we explored that bill and the answer was that 10 years was like, we could not go lower than 10 years. Okay. But that we could do 10 years. Okay, uh, does everyone understand what we're voting on? Right. So, so this is a- the entire, the entire amount would get forgiven if you keep the program in place for 10 years, essentially. Yeah. 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 Yes, so, a good a good statement, a good summary. And and that could be up to what one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. In principle, yeah. Well, we'll talk about that, but yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, so the the vote is on the amendment to uh, allow forgiveness after ten years, uh, at at one hundred percent. So, Bill Cook, how do you vote, please? I'm going to vote yes. Joseph Method. I'm going to vote yes. Uh, and Christina. I'm voting no. No. Ananda. Aye. And yes. And the chair votes yes. So the amendment carries. Now, um, we're back to the main motion, which is to accept the... Uh, proposal as outlined and stipulate that we comply with any and all rental guidelines. I would like to make a motion uh, that the dollar amount be reduced from $150,000 to $75,000. Um, so I, I, if we get a second, I can. Question? No, not until we get a second. Uh, I'll second that. Second. Um, yes, go ahead with your question, please. Um, I mean, I, I are you amend? Are you is your amendment to reduce the pot to one hundred and fifty thousand? No, the pot is I uh, reduce the pot. I mean, to 70. the total pot for the program to seventy five. Yes, that's what the original budget was. So oh, as that's not a budget that we voted on. Uh. It was a draft budget, so yes, you're correct. I believe we, I'd have to look back and see if it was ever presented. At you, I was a you know I have seen budgets where you have put that amount in. I have not been in a process where the committee decided a budget amount for this. This is the process for deciding. Okay, as the proponent of this uh, amendment, I want to just share my thinking. Uh, Bill Cook has. Um, crashed out or left the meeting, I assume he'll come back. Um, so that's just for the record. Um, we only have $265,000 total that we have awarded for CPA for fiscal year 24. In addition, we have some money that came from the general funds that uh, I personally view differently than CPA, but that's uh, subject to interpretation. And we carried about $90,000 in forward money from last year. If we spend 150,000 on this one item, we're essentially spending half of our entire year's budget uh, and getting what, 180 unit for, uh, 10 years. I think that the proportion of money that's allocated for this is completely out of uh, perspective. I think it's way too much. I think that while I hear you talking about grants being deadly if they don't have enough funding, this is not something like going to a nonprofit for a grant. This is to produce an income uh, process an income creating asset, one that it will be self funding with an incentive, and and that's my basic um, advocacy for this. I, one, it's way too much money. B, it's going to knock the hell out of our budget. Pardon my language. And C, you're you're creating an income producing asset. Ananda, please um, comment. 
Um, the document that you sent out, AD, uh, draft budget FY 2024, am I correct in, when I look at that where it reads that the total for FY 24 budgeted expenses, our total budget is five is half a million? Yes. So how is 150 half of our budget? Yeah, exactly. It depends on how you look at it. <laughs> <laughs> is our budget that total number or not? The simple answer, I've thrown it up on the screen now, if you can see it, what you're just talking about. Can you see it? Yep. I, yeah. I mean, I, I can. No, we can see it. I mean, I can change it if you want. Uh, above the line is 175,000 that we were given from free cash. Um, the lower section are all CPA funds. Uh, if you look in the fourth column, balance forward, we at the bottom where it says total, we had 91,000 carried forward unencumbered. Um, and 265 from CPA and 175 from general funds. Uh, that means Yeah, 531 uh, is available for programs and projects for this entire year. I have a question. Uh, would that sum, if somebody applies for it, would that sum be given them, say, the 75,000 uh, given to the whole sum? Or is that for number of applicants? So right now, as the proposal stands, um, the proposal doesn't take a stand on how many applicants, like it doesn't say there's a cap on how many or there has to be three proposals funded. It just says there's going to be a total pot and here's the criteria and the applicants that best meet that criteria are the ones that should be funded and will subcontract the selection process. So mm -hmm. in theory, it could go to one project. Um, it also is probably more likely that it wouldn't. Um, there are options if you wanted to modify that. I mean, I my thought is for the for the pilot phase, keep everything as flexible as possible so you get the most information you can, and then hone the program from there. If if um, you wanted to say, no, it really, like we're really uncomfortable with the idea that um, we're just leaving it so loose. I think there are other ways to think about impact besides doing a capped amount. One could be saying you're gonna do a minimum number of, of grants. The other would say, uh, put a stipulation that it has to maximize, uh, has to maximize the number of people impacted. So in that scenario, like maybe you have a family of five that put an ADU in and a couple move into that. And so you could have one project impact seven people, or you could have multiple projects and maybe impact eight, right? So there are different ways you could play with that if the committee's really uncomfortable with that. But my thought is for the pilot phase, let's make it as roomy as possible. One more question. What does actually the pilot mean? Uh, where is it going to be verified or? Yeah, what? so what it would mean is that we do this once mm -hmm. that ah. we, and we see how it goes and then we decide if there's something that we're gonna continue or if we're gonna adapt it or if we're gonna drop it. And what do you mean by being flexible? Um, I mean that the part of the design of this pilot is rather than like, we're not out doing comprehensive research. We're not hiring a consulting firm to find out if it's, you know, what all the details of what's viable in the community. We're making a good guess at what the community needs is and that there's something there. And we're going to put this in, we're going to put this idea out there. And then as the community responds, that's part of how we'll get information about it what's needed is this a good fit for our community is this just a bad idea is this something that there's something there but it needs modification to really be the best program it can be so that could be the whole program might not work 
I, I can't I don't really completely understand. So you put it out there, then actually people will participate or not. And that's what is the information that you're looking for. Yep. And as they participate, you also get information about like how well it's working. So we could put uh, we could do a really good job on outreach and advertising and get no applications. Mm -hmm. well, that's that's cool. that's that's right there. We could just put the money back in the back in. I understand, but it's never going to happen because I already have no people that that are talking about it. That's and... a positive thing. Yeah. Sure. Um. Well, I'm concerned about allocating out of our budget, however you look at it, that amount of money to this program with a lot of unknowns. How about um, doing a middle split, like 100,000 instead of... 70? Well, I mean, maybe we could go up to 100. I mean... I mean, it's great if it's one applicant, so, or two, then it's 50,000, it's kind of helping people to make the decision. But if it's a bunch of applicants, I mean, as you, as Amanda said, that we can do the cap on how many applicants will be served with that money. But um, yeah. I'm concerned that with that budget and this criteria that um, we may get proposals that look for a great number of, of dollars without providing the guidance to people as to how much the actual uh, funding could be for for them that um you see that amendment actually uh voided the certain certain um um what's the word, um, security that we have, that this is not the person who is just looking for lots of money, uh, then after 10, because he's not going to get the money forgiven in in 10 years, it's only uh, going to be forgiven 50 years. I think you guys made a huge mistake by by making that amendment, you know. Well, you know what I would say though, is that there is a, the, there's a, the third purpose of this, and it appears in the criteria section under purpose three, the third purpose and it is that um, it's the funding needs to go to people for whom having the rental income will help them be able to afford difficult the difficult cost of living in Great Barrington. So this can't be used by developers. It has to be used by somebody who lives on their property. It is not for people who are living comfortably on their property. It's really targeted to people who, for whom it's a real stretch to live here currently, or mm -hmm. who are purchased, who would like to buy a home here, but can't, um, but are also looking at a real stretch because of the overall cost of living. But you so, have people making seventy one thousand. I don't really think those people are struggling to pay two thousand dollar rent. Yeah, um, they are. They are. They are. But this isn't. You know, we're talking about on the the person who builds the ADU side. There needs to be need, and then the people, and then who they for whom they rent it to. There needs to be need. Mm -hmm. So both of those things have to be true. Um. You know, Fred, in terms of your, it's, you know, I mean, it sounds like you have, you're saying that there are two concerns. You have one that you just, you don't like the overall amount proportional to the budget for the affordable housing trust. And then I'm hearing that secondarily, you really would like there to just be a set grant cap. cap oh, with, a cap. On the grant caps, would you consider a different way, like of looking at impact rather than 
having a limited amount. Cause my concern is that, um, you know, once we put a cap at like say $40,000, we actually limit the ability of the program to meet the people who have the highest need. And so it's con it's contrary to one of the main purposes. Mm -hmm. Um, but I would, you know, I would be I would be open to talking about saying there needs to be a minimum of two projects funded, or there need or let it needs to maximize the number of people reached, which also will make it either if you have one project, you know you're re it's gonna impact a lot of people, or you're reaching multiple people through multiple projects. You know, one of the things that's been a tenant of our existence and what the CPA has asked us to do is to leverage, use our money to start things. We don't believe that we have enough money ever to buy our way out of the housing crisis, but we do believe that we can provide an incentive a portion, whether it be the down payment that allows you to qualify for a loan or other kinds of sources. If somebody is going to be able to rent um, an apartment for, say, $1,800 a month, they have a certain amount of income coming in. And while I recognize that they have overhead and the part of the purpose is to help them to get an income for doing that. But the other portion can be paying off um, the second mortgage or the mortgage or whatever they have that they borrowed to. What my preference would be that we provide enough money to help somebody qualify for a loan, uh, either as a second mortgage or homeowner's loan or such thing, rather than try to um, provide a, a, a much higher portion. And the reason is that with that incentive, they can qualify for a loan and they will have an income stream from the rental income that can uh, work to pay it off. Bill, you ran the numbers and what I recall your your assessment was that once you're once you're into having to take out a loan for the majority of the construction, you can't make any money on the on the rental. That's right. You wouldn't make any money. So it it Sure. It add, I mean, it then it adds a unit, which is not a bad thing, but it doesn't meet purpose three of this proposal. Yeah, it, it's really hard to do both things, I think. Wait, wait, wait. You, you can't make any money when you ran the numbers. You can't make any money like the um, ROI, return on investment. Right. Um, the return no, on investment was more. No, like you literally no. on a cash flow basis can't cash flow. get money. Oh, if they build it, but if they, if they put the... You're going to so have... Take somebody, take somebody like me, for example, mm -hmm. I, and I will not be applying for this program, even, even if I'm off the committee for a year. So this is just, take somebody like me. I, I, um, I am able to pay my mortgage. That's it. Right. And I think and I can't do more. And if I, and my understanding from your assessment bill is that if I, did take out a loan to convert my garage into a studio. I could convert the garage into a studio, but yeah. I would then pay the, like you, all of that rent would go into the cost of having converted the garage into the studio and the maintenance. That's basically what I came up with. Not just that, but you got to, there'll be extra taxes. Your taxes are going to go up because now you have more square footage. Yeah, so, we, need to, we need to fix that. Yeah, your expenses are going to just about wipe out. I mean, unless you just happen to have a huge down payment, if you got a, you know, a couple hundred thousand dollars and you want to just do this. Then you don't need this. Then you don't need this. So, yeah, I, I, I basically couldn't make the numbers work to get. 
at most you might get a couple hundred bucks a month ahead but so so um but a so, couple hundred bucks will help to pay a a second mortgage right and you'd have to be building a very tiny adu and you'd have to have a considerable down payment or some so, something like from the trust what, what i'm saying is with that backdrop yeah I mean, I think, again, going back to flexibility, I don't want to foreclose the different, the very few op different options and creative options that people might come up with. And so mm -hmm. I, there may be somebody who has just enough savings that with this and their savings, they can make this work and it's and the income is going to be exactly what they need. There right. might be another person who they can do they can do most of their own labor and that brings the cost down and into reach that they can do this with an, a small loan. And there might be somebody else who is well positioned where a, a small chunk of our total budget is the thing that allows them to get the loan and there's a way that that does work for them. But we're such a small community that and this is already going to be such a targeted population that I think we I think we really have to let people present us with the options they have rather than narrow those options and especially narrow those options in a way that really puts this out of reach for the people who I would most like to reach with it, which are those who are most economically tenuous. I, I'm interested in putting a cap on this program because as I feel like we have so many other ways that we can spend money to leverage uh, creation of housing or people keeping people in their housing that um, we need to husband our money across all sorts of programs. Um, well, we still will have a, a huge... I mean, two I right now, without this program, we have budgeted. We have budgeted a hundred thousand that goes directly to individuals for direct need, and then everything else is going to go to large projects, which goes to organizations. And that that's an important. I'm not knocking that. That is important, and it's a really valuable way we can leverage our resources. Um, we that we don't have in our community a way that we can invest in the solutions individuals can come up with. It's organizations, developers, or direct assistance. And I that's I think this is a creative way to test partnering with individuals, and it's worth the same type of investment that we're putting in some other places. And it's a one time it's a one-time thing to do it at this level. And I also think that, I also think that like our work is to grow our overall budget so that we, if we like this program, if it works, we could keep it at this and it's not as high a proportion of the budget. I agree completely. Um, okay, um, I think we've talked through it. So the proposal of the amendment on the on the floor is uh to change the total pack the total amount of the pot reduced from 150 to seventy five thousand dollars we're going to have a roll call vote if you agree to reduce the number to seventy five thousand that would be an a vote so uh bill cook uh no no joe method joseph method no uh christina no. And Ananda? No. And Fred votes yes, does my amendment, and I'm going to vote yes. And okay, so back good. to the... Made a strong case. I appreciate all the hard work that's gone into creating this. Uh, I understand um, there. So we're back to the basic uh, proposal. Um, I'd like to open it, because this is so important, I'd like to open it up to comments rather than ask people to hold their comments until citizens speak. 
But before I do that, I want to know if anyone else from the committee would like to speak um, again. Again, just to recap, the proposal on the floor is to adopt the motion as outlined and stipulate and comply with any and all rental guidelines. Um, with the amendment. With the amendment of, uh, I'll call it sunsetting after 10 years. Forgiveness after 10 years, which is already amended. Is there anyone else on the committee that has a um, an issue? And do you want me to show any different page here? No, I, I'm willing to let this go forward. I'd like to make sure that uh, the town legal has a look at it, just to be safe. Okay, subject to the legal review. Legal review. I'm in agreement. Um, yeah, agreed. I uh, see Amy Turnbull, who has spoken with us before, has her hand uh, raised. I'm going to ask Amy to uh, comment. Please uh, try to keep it to three or four minutes, if you could. So I just want to know, is this comment going to be for the uh, amendment or for the proposal at large? Uh, well, you 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 have three minutes or five minutes, if I, if, if I give it to you, to address whatever you like. It's basically... Okay, well you can talk about either one. Okay. So, I mean, I'll, I'll leave that because I think I've already let you guys know that I think uh, 10 years is a disincentive. So that's my feeling, especially for those people who don't need to borrow that much money. Um, so, but my biggest concern is the criteria that you guys are going to be using. Um, in the absence of a survey, I understand what Ananda is doing when she set it up as one giant pot and she's just waiting to see who comes to the table. But the downside of that is how are you gonna how are you gonna do the selection process for that? I know you gave quite a bit of discussion to that at your last meeting. Um, because I find the way the way the proposal is right now is very vague when it comes to criteria. And it's, it's, it's unclear to me if a purpose is a criteria because um, I always thought a purpose was something you put at the top of your resume that was a general statement. I, didn't, I don't see it as a criteria. Also absent in that purpose or maybe another purpose should be considered whereby, uh, and we got away from this because we started with workforce housing and we started with multiple units. And somehow we ended up with, with ADU, like it's one ADU for $150,000. That's how it reads. And if if I'm reading it like that and I have inside information, you guys are gonna do a, have to do a heck of a media blitz to, to persuade people. Um, I, just don't, I just don't know what's gonna happen when you get three people who wanna host a tiny house and one person who wants to do a tiny house and one other person who wants to do $150,000 ADU and if you don't have your criteria ready to go, you're you're setting yourself up for a, a big problem um, with favoritism. Um, because I don't know if it's not clear how you guys are going to decide who you're going to pick. Um, and as far as the hundred and fifty thousand dollars, I think that's great that it's one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. But my suggestion would be that you don't have a general pot like like. Um, like Fred said, because I, I don't, it, I think it's too wishy-washy. I don't, I think it'll confuse people. I think if, if you say, you know, let's have um, one person buy a tiny house and, and, and we'll pay for the placement and another person can do a conventional and we'll put uh, $50,000 or $75,000 towards that placement. And that's it. Call it a day. And then you do the criteria around that and then you're done. But again, the, the original intention when this was first broached through the American Tiny House was the more units you have, the more successful is your program and the more money you're gonna get in future from the CPA. And isn't that the larger goal? Thank you. Does anyone wanna to respond to anything, Ananda? Um, I'll make a clarification that um, 
per Chris Rumbold's suggestion, the proposal um, is that includes that the uh, selection process will be subcontracted and that based on four criteria. And um, it specifies that the applications will be scored by the subcontractor based on those criteria. Mm -hmm. Um, you said, though, that you are directing our would-be subcontractors. So, again, I think that it's, it's we're clear. And the Affordable Housing Trust will not be selecting the applicant. That will... That will um, no, I understand that. But in a meeting, you had said that you, you are directing um, one of our partners. So I was I was a little concerned about that when I heard that. It's a it's a rubric. You yeah. yeah, I'm not seeing the rubric. That's what I'm saying, and I and I respect that that Chris probably knows what he's talking about. But have we ever done this before? Do we no. have something that we can rely on that's like a, a a roadmap? Well, that's one of the benefits of working with a subcontractor that um has experience with managing application processes and things like that, that we will benefit in addition from what the town knows and the and what is known by this committee. But, I, but I nevertheless, I, the I, criteria I, has to come from the Affordable Housing Trust, and it's very weak, in my opinion. The criteria is project viability, the res meeting residency requirements, the quality of the living space proposed, and the extent to which the uh, the extent to which the applicant will meet the third purpose of the project. Yeah, I think it's going to get really complicated when you've got multiple people. So basically, you've got a barrel of of apples and 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 oranges, like my dad used to say. They're they're not like projects. So mm -hmm. unless you define it ahead of time. You're just, you're just, it's going to be project score highest. I completely agree with this. Completely. The project score highest. Will, I mean, it's very, I mean, later we're going to be talk, looking at an RFP structure that Fred's set up. It's, it, it's a very common process and it, and it, there are people who are experienced with it. I've done it in other areas. And I, I, I get that the subcontractor is going to be doing it, but so what you're saying is you're going to let them pick the criteria? No. No, the criteria are set. But they're not. They are not set because I am really loosey-goosey. Yeah, I agree. Can I say something? It's absolutely true. Like you made me realize, Annie, that we have so many different uh, uh, proposal, uh, projects here in, within this proposal. If it's a if it's a just infrastructure for a tiny house or buying tiny house or actually building the house, that that is a vast difference of how much money people should get. So I I don't really uh, I I don't really see that we have a very well set criteria. Absolutely. Uh, I tend to agree. I think that we I think that this is a very good start of criteria. But I, I would say that what happens if you have some projects that uh, require a lot of money, some projects that require a little bit of money? How do you decide? How do how do you how do you balance that? I think the criteria needs to say so, that what you would do in those cases. Would you say? that you know project viability doesn't quite get added enough that means do you have enough money to finish the project what i'm asking about is uh the, the effectiveness i guess would be the, the the best thing uh the balance how do you some sort of criteria that's written to balance the competing needs uh, uh, subject to the available budget and resources. I mean, just number of affordable units created, right? Or number, I guess, I guess Anando's saying. Doesn't say it here, though. No, 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 I, I, why I think we should amend it to add that. We're, we're only talking about one unit. Well, that's the problem. Number, no, no, number. no, but Bill, we're talking, we don't. We're not. We're oh, not talking about that. The total pot is equal to one unit. We're talking that the each application is likely to be equal to one additional unit. 
but the total pot could support multiple units. We don't okay. know. What, what's this, what's to guide someone who's coming at this program to say, well, I only need 35,000 to make my numbers work, but they've got more money. So I'm going to put in for 75,000, yep. you know, and if I get it, that's great. You know, how can we either reject it or modify that applicant and say, you know, your numbers show us that you only need 35,000, say. So what um, I would say is that would fall under when we're looking at the extent to which the landlord applicant meets the the purpose three, which is the extent to which the landlord applicant has financial need. So if the finance, so that if the, somebody is not demonstrating financial need and part of how they're not demonstrating that is they like they have these other resources that they're not accessing, then their score in that area would be lower and it would make them less competitive. Uh, I think I honestly think Amy's identified some some serious issues here and, and there. Um, I'm going to go on though because Eileen Mooney has raised her hand and I'm going to ask her to comment. Um, let me see here. Eileen, go ahead, please. Yeah, I have a question and I might not be interpreting correctly, but when you're talking about deciding how much an applicant needs, would that be the subcontracting party making the decision at, or would it be the board and on what basis? It would be their, it would be their proposal. So it's, it's just like the, the, the envision, the envision system is very similar to CPA. It's just like, it's somebody saying, I think I can make an ADU for, for $40,000. And then, you know, and then we would, then the, the subcontractor would be evaluating to, to say whether they, they believe that's true. Are they going to be community based subcontractor or, or somebody yeah. from outside of the town or what? No, uh, no, I think the town would select an organization that is already familiar with it in part of the community. Mm -hmm. I mean, you could, there's, so there's a couple things, like, like I've said before, I think that there are other ways, like, I think that the conversation about dollar amount is standing in for a conversation about impact. And the conversation about impact, I do think is really important. And I think there are other ways we could get at it besides putting a specific cap. So again, I just want to put on the table that if there's, if, if there's a need to do something more than what this proposal does, that there are other alternatives could include saying there needs to be a minimum of two proposals funded or um, set a overall charge to the subcontractor that it has to maximize the number of the total number of people impacted, um, which also leaves room for variability, but keeps that emphasis on impact really does matter. Um, it would not, I would agree with with thoughts in the in the space that would say it would be a bad use of funds if you had 150,000 go to to stabilize a single person in their residence and house another single person that is that's not what we're hoping for and it's not what I would expect we'd see out of the comp, out of competing applicants. Um, but also I, I, would like to say that there's another, uh, you know, another thing that we could do is you could, we could follow Chris's recommendation, subcontract this process, and then have a final step where the subcontractor contractor brings, um, brings their recommendation for a final vote. And it, and it's a, you know, it's, we're getting broad outlines of the project, but we, that way we're not um, in the weeds with individual applicants. Uh, Joseph, you have your hand up. So, uh, can I, uh, I just want to propose an amendment to say, uh, add a criterion five and it, it essentially, it says cost effectiveness, uh, the cost effectiveness, the project, uh, uh, creates an affordable unit for the, or, uh, 
the project cost effectiveness, the project creates a new affordable unit for less money. Does that make sense as as, as English? More well, uh, can we get a so the cost effectiveness criteria five cost effectiveness of the project by for of for creating a new AD unit. Yeah, but that's that yeah, and that 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 way that way language. Is so, there a second? I'll second it. Second for Bill. Um I a new ADU unit. I well I think we need something like that. Um I kind of think that we're not ready to vote on the main issue. I think that some of this discussion has uh, highlighted the fact that there are still some issues that need to be worked through, uh, particularly about the criteria. When we do an RFP for any reason, it's always the, the, the rubric that we have to make the choices that becomes the most important part uh, uh, going forward. Uh, while the discussion right now is on the amendment to add a criteria five, uh, I basically would say that I don't think we're ready to vote on the whole thing tonight. Yeah, that's probably true. But can we can we try to resolve this question? Sure. Like, do sure. We, we... any comments on? Uh, I I liked um, Ananda's word of uh, impact. Uh, rather than cost effectiveness, impact. Um, so impact helps. Uh, impact helps the maximum number of people for the least amount of money. No. No, because I think we want we want the we want the overall portfolio to impact the have the greatest impact um and that that might be by selecting you know that might be by select the selecting the the constellation of projects that get selected is how you achieve that can we put that in writing say that the overall purpose i mean rather than one criteria the the criteria could be uh resource the impact of the resource the available resources over uh, a variety of projects shall be a consideration um yeah so if so under selection it says we're basically we'll be charging the subcontractor to select applications based on the project viability residency living space proposed um the needs of the applicant. And um, since it's a charge to the subcontractor, you could, you know, you could put their, um, ma you know, it's like maximizing overall impact of the total pilot. Um, I'm going to do a technical question first, and it has to do with, uh, we're approaching eight o'clock, which is our traditional time to sign off. Uh, but we still have some other things that we really, really need to get to tonight. Um, can at least four people stay for another half an hour or so? I guess. Okay. I can't. I have to be somewhere after 8.15, at 8 so. Understood. So if there's consensus that this that the committee does not want to vote on this tonight, do you want to send the 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 discussion about the criteria based on this conversation back to the working group for revisions and that the revisions should reflect the character of this discussion that's what i'd like to see happen yeah i agree with that i and i think i mean i don't we don't also have to specify but i think what we should do is is have a section that says rubric like just like Yes. It's yes. like if you distinguish between criteria, which is like yes, no, pass, fail, and rubric, which is like the subjective, like point based thing, even if we don't specify the actual weights necessarily, but like specify the rubric. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I think that would be great. Okay, uh, so we're going to table then the, uh, I guess I need a motion to table the vote to um, approve. Okay, so so moved and seconded. I'll second. Bill is second. And um, Joseph Method, please. Uh, this is a motion to uh, table uh -huh. the proposal for tonight and uh, to send it back to the committee to add additional uh -huh. rubrics or criteria as and and to uh, incorporate the other amendments that we talked about. Yep. So Joseph, can you vote, please? Aye. Aye. Christina? Aye. Uh, Ananda. Aye. And Bill. Aye. And Fred. Aye. So uh, thank you all. I think this is a very valuable discussion. I'm glad we had it, you know, in the open here with everybody. Um, I do want to just tell you that there's a couple of things that are really exciting that I put under new business. The first is that um, CPA. Uh, C, I'm sorry, CDC, the Community Development Corporation, has a proposal to buy the bed and breakfast known as the Thornwood Inn, which is on Route 7 near the CHA uh, Community Health Program, CHP offices at what's known as the Triangle. And this would become workforce housing. That would be individual rooms that would be rented uh, on a, uh, a monthly or short-term basis uh, to people who need them. They've had some discussions. In other words, this would be similar to Windflower, if you're familiar with that project. Um, they've asked for uh, 175000 from the uh, Affordable Housing Trust uh, to uh, assist with the down payment. There, the we have in your packet a um, a brief outline, and uh, what we told Bill and I met with Carol or talked to Carol. I talked to Carol about um, of the CDC about this program, and we're enthusiastic. The inn has fourteen rooms. Uh, that are all en suite, plus there's a, a, a manager's house or some other things. And there's also, while it's not included in this proposal right now, there's also a, a fair amount of land that's part of the triangle that may or may not become available in the future and could become um, a, a site for additional uh, housing units. That's not part of this proposal but it is something that could be um, a potential there. There is a demand for this. The, the model that we have already is the Windflower. The town used ARPA money uh, and paid, uh, gave Construct about 400,000 to purchase Windflower, which is on uh, down near the Egremont, South Egremont line. Um, so uh, this is mostly informational for you right now. Um, if you're uh, interested in entertaining this, the CDC will come back with a pro forma at our next meeting in September with this request. Uh, I'm enthusiastic. I would like to support this. When we got into this, we started looking at whether we could um, legally award uh, accept this proposal and award funds from our thing. It's a gray area. We haven't gotten, we haven't gotten um, complete legal clarity. What we'd like to do is something Ananda had suggested once earlier, and that is to issue a sort of blanket RFP uh, that would invite other proposals and uh, the CDC or others to come in. And that way we not are just uh, playing favoritism for the, the, the 
local nonprofit that's come in front of us there. So uh, in your packet tonight, I put out a, uh, I thought I had it here. Uh, I don't have it up. This, the, the, the RFP proposal. Uh, I don't know if you had a chance to review that. It's kind of complicated, um, but we'd like to issue an RFP so that uh, CDC could come back next month responding to that RFP uh, with this request. Does that make sense? Yeah, can we uh, have any discussion on this? But uh... yeah, sure, sure. Oh, I should, I should stop sharing my screen, shouldn't I? Um, there. Uh, what, what I would like to say, um, and I'm not hundred percent sure on that, is that it's really scary for me this tendency to buy workers' pads you know, room for workers. Do you know that that's exactly what's happening in China? And in China, they have actually cities with one room for a worker. And uh, the tendency, and those those are not, that's, that is really supporting a business. It's not supporting a human, you know, to, to live in a whole huge house full of other people uh, unless they're really young and they don't really care, um, I I am absolutely against actually at this this direction to go to act to create the workers' rooms rooming houses. It's scary to me. Uh, okay. Do we have? information on how uh windflower is doing it's not, i think they were full only anecdotal windflower is a little bit different i think because they have actually um more um like the rooms uh, each has a bathroom you know it's you just share something it's 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 fancy you know it's something desirable I don't know what's the thorn what idea. Oh, it's it's pretty much the same thing. It's the same thing. Every room has a bathroom. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I still think it's kind of hefty rent for a room with 17 roommates, but how much is the rent? Sorry, I didn't hear it. Oh, I think I said between nine hundred and fourteen. Oh. <laughs> nine fifty and fourteen fifty for a room. That's just ridiculous. Ridiculous. And it's it's really a support for business, not for people. Well, it won't be a business. <laughs> no, support for businesses who are who are hiring those people. Yes, that's true. And because the person, if he has to pay for that room where it's with 17 roommates, as you said, he has to pay between nine and fourteen hundred, he's paying fifty percent of what he's making, basically. So now uh, I, I, if you know, if you ever catch me in the quorum, and you know, I'm, I'm always going to be voting against it. Mm -hmm. Ananda, you have your hand up. Um. Yeah. Two things. One. Um. To the just the points just made about the rental costs in this, what we're looking at in this draft, which I understand isn't really a proposal; it's just information. Mm -hmm. Um. The their rental starting place is the high end of what Windflower is, just for us to know. Yeah, good. So that's separately. Well, Carol main, would be here to answer questions, but well, you know, yeah, if you were if you this were week, evaluating an actual proposal, um, and I offered to yeah. give this as information. Um, yeah. Then my one more question: Who is going to get the money? Um, who is profiting from it? Nobody. Nobody. Um, my main question is why, I guess I'm, I'm just thinking in terms of the larger picture in the town right now, um, given the, t the time frame that you're looking at for doing this, why wouldn't this be a direct proposal to CPC or CPA? I believe they are going to go to CPA. As you may or may not know, Okay. CPA has yeah. Yeah. opened up an out of cycle uh, fiscal year 24 um, funding 
okay. proposal. And then to take that point further, I think I I do want to see us create a proposal process for organizations that can be standardized. And I like this RFP as a starting place for discussion for us as a committee to be able to talk through what are our criteria, how do we want to think about this. Um, I see the major advantage of the affordable housing trust is that we can we can set up something on a rolling application basis, whereas otherwise without an affordable housing trust, um, we're as a community we're locked into a funding cycle that typically only happens once a year through the CPA. It has an incredibly long lead time, which isn't practical when you're talking about exactly. real estate. So right. I I my question is is do you think it's possible to actually instead of having this a time limited RFP have it be structure it in a way that it's an ongoing open window and we yes. have a general budget line so that okay because that's I'm very interested. that's what some affordable housing trusts do yeah. is okay. annually they reissue an open-ended RFP saying please bring us your proposals and uh, then I then I was thinking we have such a good website that in that we could have a link to the application right there on the website and it could happen yeah. through that and it could be very standardized and cut down on the administrative part. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, I'm not, I don't have the, yeah, I don't have the RFP up right now. Um, what I would urge you to do is to take at your time um, to review the RFP process and in September meeting plan on uh, discussing the RFP so that we can offer that. Um, we can have Carol uh, Bosco Bowman, the executive director of the CTC come and talk to us. Uh, I, we're not gonna take a vote tonight but I get the sense uh, that we think that having them go directly to uh, the CPA committee may be a better avenue. Um, as I understand it, and this is only anecdotal, that CPA actually has extra money this year, largely because um, the developer of uh, the Mahewi block and I'll uh, call it the BD, B, the BCC building next to Willard Taylor, which used to be the garage, uh, declined their um, award. <laughs> and you know. well, I, th I think the reason we're, well, the CPC decided to reopen is because we're going to have a special town meeting to vote on the school. Yes. Because we're otherwise, not. they'd still be back in July of next year before he got any money. Well, we're a committee that's going to provide pro, make a proposal to CPC, Sam, sorry, CPA every year. We're going to be in front of them every year because yeah. we're hand in glove. We're tied to them. We're, you know, the state set it up that way. And that's our principal funding source. But we're not going to go into the, or I don't think that we need to go into the out of cycle fiscal year 24. We've already received our fiscal year 24. Oh, yeah, uh, no, I'm saying that, that's why the Thornwood comes up because they can go directly to the CPC and say what they would say to us. Mm -hmm. Yep. Because the special meeting's coming up in October, it can be voted on. Yeah. Well, if I had my druthers, the, the CPA committee would give all of their affordable housing money to us and let us make the decisions. But that's Over not the way it's going to work in this town. Well, we'll see. It's not right now. Not right now. So just for clarification, for this special October town meeting this fall, the deadline for um the first step applications is the 28th of this month. And then step two is due Monday, the 11th of September. And then if their schedule for the regular cycle is similar to last year, we should be seeing a deadline for step one around the end of October and step two around the start of December, end of November. So, yes. so that 
so that the step two applications can be prepared as part of the budget uh, and the uh, stuff that goes on the... Um, yes, the town warrant. The town warrant, thank you. Um, and, you know, I you anticipate that we'll probably come back with about the same amount that we requested last year. Last year, we requested 340,000. They knocked it down by 75,000 and gave us uh, 265,000. So, uh, why they told us that they didn't want to fund the ADU proposal because it, they didn't feel it was ready. I tried to explain to them that, yeah, it wasn't ready in October. But, a, you know, by the time we got the money, we would have something. So, so we're, am I correct in understanding that we are not discussing applying for funds now during this um, August, September cycle? That's correct. It could be that the will of the committee can do whatever you want. I, I, I don't believe that we can. I don't believe we would be successful. I believe that we've already gotten our fiscal year 24 grant. What they're talking about is, is awarding fiscal year 24 money, I believe. That's right. Yeah, but it can't be appropriated until May 20. Uh, no. Oh, it's... no, it's going to be. Yeah, sorry, I forgot. Yeah, it'll be appropriated at the special town meeting. Yeah, gotcha. Sorry. Which you. is the only reason that they can actually try and do it for Thornwood because otherwise they still would be waiting to May and it's no good. Okay, moving on. Um, in addition, um, you may have been aware that Lee Davis is proposing a, a, a real estate transfer fee on properties over a million dollars. And she's specifically tied the proceeds to the Affordable Housing Trust the current proposal is a, a transfer fee of about 1% on all real estate sold in Great Barrington, whether commercial or um, personal, uh, over a million dollars. Uh, according to her analysis from the years that we, the, the most recent year that we have is, uh, would it be about 200 or $210,000 uh, available um, um, to the Affordable Housing Trust. I think that it's good. She wants us to uh, support that. Uh, what Lee is also told, and she's trying to get that into the special town meeting uh, this fall. It's not, hasn't, it hasn't been voted on yet and it's still continuing uh, uh, for the select board and it's still to be refined and may have some additional changes. Um, however, Lee told me that she has some pushback that people believe that the Affordable Housing Trust is going to fund monies for people that don't live in Great Barrington, the people that come from Boston, uh, or that we can't control uh, that the money is going to go locally and be invested in Great Barrington. Uh, so she would like our committee to um, get the word out that everything we do is for uh, housing in Great Barrington. Legally required to be so. Exactly. Yeah. I have to leave, so thank okay, you. Okay, well, much. thank you. Later. Take care. Good night. Good night. Um, so... Um, The other issues I had was I uh, included in your packet the uh, a proposed budget. That was just my, and it's, it's a draft, so it has not been voted on. Uh, we just don't, I'm sorry, we don't have a quorum anymore. We don't. Um, I am unclear as to what we have to do here. Can we still continue to talk or? We can talk. We can't vote on anything. Um, the budget is a draft. It is my attempt to try to say, this is the net resources we have. 
what's the best way that we can allocate them between the various programs and activities that we do. Um, as I mentioned earlier, when we talked about this very briefly, I believe, I, I, I look at it as two different classes of money. The money that from CPA has its CPA requirements and restrictions, but the money that we came from the town uh, 175,000 this year uh, is less restrictive. And in fact, if the real estate transfer tax goes for a fee goes forward, that money itself would be less restrictive. We could do something. You know, we had a grant program with Egermont a while ago about uh, helping uh, income qualified people to stay in their homes, to do repairs. Uh, you know, if the stairs were broken or if the roof was leaking or things like that, that was a grant funded program. Well, we looked into doing that with CPA money and we can't do that, but we could do that program to repair how homes and, and such to help people stay in their homes uh, with either town money or the real estate transfer money. Yeah, my only concern about that is that we already have a place in town that uses the uh, block grant money to do that very thing well are they doing it they are i thought it was i thought it was out of money um it runs out of money every year but they get new money every year so okay um i just think it might be redundant uh we could we could check with them all their all their contact information is on our website <laughs> well the point is if you wanted to do that money has that, less restrictions on program? it um right different restrictions on it than the CPA money. Right. Yes. I had okay. a little chat with uh, Paul Marks representatives the other morning about uh, making all housing trust money exempt from the 30B process so that we could use any money that comes in either from the town or from CPA to purchase land or a building or whatever. We'll see where that goes. Um, so what's the process you'd like to see happen for the budget, Fred? You know, it's not, it's, it's, we need a budget. We need an annual budget that needs to be reviewed. We need to have a, a current year budget and we need to have a prospective future budget. And the reason for the prospective is that's what we take to CPA. That's what we say to CPA in fiscal year 25, this is what we anticipate spending money on. Uh, you asked what, what, we, what we should do. Uh, it's a very dynamic document. It's basically, it's my best uh, estimate of where the money is going to go and where it's going to be spent so that we see what's available and what's not available. So, but process-wise on the committee side, what are the next steps you would like to see happen? Should we like, be as from the trust in our next meeting? Well, if we could all write a check for $100,000, that would help the budget a lot. Well, like, so do you, like, do you want us to discuss this, propose revisions? Do you want us to vote and approve it? Like what's the budgeting process we want to have? Uh, I, I certainly want to discuss it. I want to be clear. I don't want it to be one person. I don't want ever to have one person acting for the committee. I want the committee to act uh, as a committee uh, on these issues. Uh, we could vote on this with the understanding that it is going to be a dynamic issue that um, we can always vote to change it back. It's, it's, it's basically an armature or a, a framework of where so we're going to go. Yeah. So for a gut from a governance process, I think it would strengthen our governance muscles as a committee to go through a process where we adopt a budget through a vote for the year to come. Yeah. And then maybe we adopt as part of each of our meetings, a 
a, a review format where we affirm that we've all looked at it. We ask any questions we have about the last month and we just, we approve the report we looked at and that's, that will allow for us. I'm not sure we have to do it every meeting. month because we, we go months at a time without any expenditures. Yeah, that's okay. It will, that will be really good practice at going quickly <laughs> and it will meet, it will get the whole committee used to like we're we should be looking at numbers and if we've missed that everybody will notice instead of it sitting on one person like you Fred. Yeah, I think that's a reasonable suggestion. Okay. I mean, I think we should look at the budget in June or July is the beginning of our July 1st is the beginning of our fiscal year. So, I think we should make it part of our annual uh June uh, vote to vote on the budget for the upcoming year that we're entering. Yeah, so uh, May we should look at a preliminary. The town meeting will finalize numbers for us so that we can vote on something final in June. Right. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, have a draft budget for the subsequent year uh, going forward. And that we probably that we want to draft in time to prepare proposals in the fall. Yes, for the CPA. So it would work to do that in July or August, or do you want to do that at the same time as you're doing as you're finalizing the budget for the for the? You know, they could be different tabs on an Excel document that just populate one to the next kind of thing. So knowing that part of, well, let's see how it goes, but it may be a place to use a subcommittee. Um to shape the perspective budgets each year. Sure. The awkward part is that we have to have it posted and all that stuff, but you know, and have to have a quorum. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But um, it's easier from a but, you know, they way have way you to have designate thing. one person to put together a budget and then talk about it and revise it. I, you know what I think a subcommittee is is good for is when you is when there are concepts that need to be worked out, and so that's why I think like on that perspective year part where it's like where there's yep. some visioning, um, and then once we have the perspective, you're working from a draft already, and you probably don't need a a subcommittee. Yep. The other thing that was really valuable about using this subcommittee for this working group process was being able to have. Um, like Jeremy on the subcommittee. Sure. And um, I could imagine, you know, like, for example, with Lee working on this, um, if we'd been doing it, like if we'd had a process in the spring, that would have been a way to maybe connect and loop her in directly in the visioning or something else could come up in the future. Yep. And, you know, we could have uh, somebody like Lee or Jeremy or whomever yeah, uh, attend a meeting. Uh, um, anyway, are there any other um, uh, trustee comments? Any other comments? I think those are all good ideas. Yeah. No. So, trustees, speak. Any, any, anything new? Anybody wants to talk about anything? Um, I wanted to mention that the Berkshire delegation is hosting a, I think they're calling it a summit. Um, it's a half day. I don't have the date in front of me. I believe it's in September for the whole county on housing and um, food insecurity. Right, um, I got that. I imagine several people got that. September 22nd was my memory. Yeah, so hopefully we'll 11 to, make sure some uh, of us attend. I think it's in Lennox. Yeah, yes. Lennox Town Hall Auditorium. Yeah. Um, yes, that's wonderful. Um, the I will tell you that the I've been working with the town manager and uh, the town's consultant, Ellen Lair, who is a, pu a public public relations consultant, about uh, publicizing the success of affordable housing in Great Barrington with basically uh, either a press release or a letter to the editor. 
something like that. So mm -hmm. that may come out one of these days. And Lee Davis, of course, has asked for get a plug in for help. the get a plug in for the down payment program. Maybe you can stir up some business. Yeah. Well, I suspect that when the Grove Street House goes forward, we may uh, find ourselves with a grant application. Uh, any other trustees comments, news, anything? Nope. Hearing none. Uh, citizens speak. I see that uh, James 84 North Plain Road. Please go ahead and keep your own. You try to keep it to three minutes if you could, please. Yes, thank you. It's James Garzone, 84 North Plain Road, and I'll definitely keep it on the three minutes. I just want to mention a couple of things. The real estate transfer fee that's being discussed, I believe, is going to be a hard sell because, as we all know, we're tired of being feed or taxed. My proposal has been that the 3% uh, that's dedicated to CPC, at least 1%, if not one and a half, be allocated to the Affordable Housing Trust. I know that there's not something that's going to happen, but maybe we can force it through a citizen petition. And secondly, if the town is going to be a, have a special town meeting, why don't we, the Affordable Housing Trust, request for funds? I know that it might not be approved, but I think the, afford, the Affordable Housing Trust should be aggressive in getting funds. We have the opportunity to request it. If we don't request, we'll never know we will receive it. Uh, and, the, and the reason why the CPC has money is because some articles were voted down by the citizens because we're just tired of being taxed. So I really feel the real estate transfer fee won't, won't happen. Uh, personally, I hope it doesn't because again, we're just taxed to death and my house is not a hundred million dollars. So it won't meet the threshold, but it's just, it's ridiculous that every time there's a problem solution is to get a tax or a fee. So I ask, if we can be allocated at least one, one and a half percent of the CPC, I ask that we request money in the special town meeting that's coming up. Number three, I've also proposed that maybe permits can have a $10 fee attached that goes directly to affordable housing trust. My point is we have to find different solutions other than just continuously, continuously adding taxes. And thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, media time. Eileen, anything new? No. Uh, the next meeting is scheduled for September 19th uh, at 6.30 but via Zoom. That date will be confirmed. Thank you, everybody, for your attendance. Good night. Thanks.